No dark spawn. That's unfortunate. When learned group heal. <sighs> that was interesting and draining. What was that? Did you summon the spirit? I called forth the spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. So you could kill yourself? Doing this, I would prefer you not do that. Well, um, that's certainly conceivable. I suppose I shouldn't be using that particular trick to entertain children at parties. Uh, don't go exerting yourself. I promise I'll be careful. And thank you, your concern is touching. Now, I didn't notice before, but Wynne seems to learn a lot of her stuff through just traveling around like kind of cutscenes. Right. Or so do I remember anyone else doing. Like she first collapses in an in-between moment, going from one point to another. And then, that's when you first learn of her little predicament. And then in this one, you learn like an entirely new skill. That you would have missed out on if, I guess, you like, didn't take with you enough. Alright, we're in the village of Haven. Let's see what's going on here, because Genetivi should be here. Hopefully he's okay, considering his assistant got McMurdered. What are you doing in Haven? There's nothing for you here. Well, that's very presumptuous of you. I would like to explore Haven for a while. We do not appreciate lowlanders looking about our home as though it was some sort of zoo. Uh, I had some questions about Haven. Ask and be on your way. How long has this place been here? Haven's always been here. My family knows no other home. Hmm. Who's in charge of the village? Father Eirik is our spiritual leader and guide. Revered father? I've never heard of this. It's always been thus in Haven. We do not question tradition. Hmm. Are your traditions very different from ours? Our ways are not the ways of the lowland cities. Why haven't I heard of Haven before? We keep to ourselves. We see no need to announce our presence to the world. It's more peaceful that way. All right, well, very well. Excuse me. You may trade for supplies at the shop if you wish. Then I suggest you and your companions leave. Did it just get a lot colder, or is it just me? Yeah, we're not going to ask about Jenna TV or the urn. Because uh, there's already some suspicious activity going around. Considering what was found in Denerim, so Uslan knows far better than to just start blurting out their business. Come, come, Bonnie Lynn, tell us, tell us where you've been. Were you up? Were you down? Chasing rabbits around the town. Come, come, Bonnie Lynn, tell us, tell us where you've been. Come, who are you? You shouldn't be here. Hello, strange, creepy child. Who are you? I asked you first. I'm Ardelia. Lowlanders don't belong here. Rude! What? Why are you looking at me like that? Hey, I bet you're a, a clever boy. What do you know about Haven? Haven is Haven. But I have a secret. Do you want to see? Yeah, sure. The boy pulls out something from his pocket and shows it to you. A finger bone. Bleached white by the sun and polished through constant handling. Uh, where did you get that? Over by the mountain. It's lucky. I keep it with me. Don't tell anyone, alright? Okay then. That's probably not good. You remind me of Lady Cecily. Who? She was an Orlesian lady. My mother served her until she died, and Lady Cecily let me stay instead of turning me out on the street. You are like her in some ways. You have the same poise, the same air of nobility. Oh, child, <laughs> I am hardly noble. I learned that nobility 
isn't just something you are born with. I have met nobles who are very petty and mean, complete degenerates. Then, there are people with a certain dignity and grace. It draws you to them, no matter who you are or who they are. I think the lowest peasant can have the most noble spirit, and it will always shine through. It is this nobility of spirit that you share with Sicily. Why, thank you, Liliana. It is very kind of you to say that. They're bonding. Well, this is nice. Mountain air, quiet village. But where is everyone? Good question. As you wish. Hello, shopkeep. Who are you? You're not from Haven. So, like, why does everyone tell me that like I don't already know? Why does everyone tell me that like I don't already know it? We... we don't get very many visitors. Can you tell me about Haven? How would you describe the place you know only as home? This is the shop, yes? I'd like to trade. I don't have much, but I suppose you can take a look. Let's investigate a little more. Take a look around this house. Love letter, okay. Oh. And... That is not good. This altar appears to have been used recently. A pool of blood remains, running over the sides in dark rivulets. I was not expecting to find something so unsettling. Used for food preparation, perhaps? Does the meat bleed that much? I'm just trying to be optimistic. The other explanation is slightly more disturbing. Dago, no! What is it, boy? Was someone killed here? Well, this village is not quite what it seems, is it? Well, due to my dog's brilliant deduction, we have determined that someone was murdered here. Oh, why did you lick human blood? I thought you didn't like eating people. I thought that distressed you. And, and we found out you. too much. Well. The whole town has turned against us. And even leather boots. I know someone who will like this. Alright, so we've murdered the shopkeep. Uh-oh. A corpse. As you wish. I'm wearing clothing left on this dismembered man. Wait. Indicate that he was from Red Cliff, one of our layman's knights. Not good at all. We gotta find Jenna TV. No more time for diplomacy. Only death. It sounds like they are singing the chant in there. Maybe we should have a look. Maybe we should. Weapons at the ready. We are blessed beyond measure. We are chosen by the holy and beloved to be her guardians. This sacred duty is given to us alone. Rejoice, my brethren, and prepare your hearts to receive her. Lift up your voices and despair not, for she will raise her faithful servants to glory when her... Ah, welcome. I heard we had a visitor wandering about the village. I trust you've enjoyed your time in Haven so far? You killed the Knights of Red Cliff. I saw the bodies. I found the bloodstained altar. Knives. Uh, I think we're well past pretending this village is normal. Perhaps. But staying hidden means staying protected. And we must protect Haven and our charges at all costs. We don't owe you any explanations for our actions. We have a sacred duty. Failure to protect her would be a greater sin. All will be forgiven. Oh, death to you. <laughs> Looks like we've got a secret door. There, are you okay? Who are you? They... they've sent you to finish it. I'm Adelia. I'm here to help you. You don't know how glad I am to see someone who isn't from this village. I... Oh, the leg's not doing so well, and I can't feel my foot. Wynn, can you help? I can set the leg and ease some of the pain, but he'll need a lot of rest in order to heal. 
I don't have time to rest now. I'm so close. The urn is just up that mountain. How do you know? My research led me to Haven, and I have heard the villagers talking. I know the urn is here. Haven lies in the shadow of the mountain that holds the urn. There is an old temple there built to protect it. The door is always locked, but I know what the key is. Irik wears a medallion that opens the temple door. I've seen what he does with it. This medallion? Yes, that is your key. Take me to the mountainside and I will show you. Are you sure you can make the journey? It is not that far, and will you let me lean on you? For the urn, any pain is worth enduring. Could you answer some questions for me first? All right. What is on your mind? Uh, this place a little odd, isn't it? <laughs> well, it wasn't exactly what I expected it to be. Why did Haven have a revered father? As he don't have one anymore, because I, I killed him. I do not know. When the Chantry was established, it was decided that only female priests would ever be ordained. It is possible that the villagers, the disciples of Andraste, predate the Chantry and so have no knowledge of the Chantry's rules. So what do you know about Haven and its people? They call themselves the Disciples of Andraste. And they are very, very devoted. One could say fanatically so. They must be here to protect the urn, but they speak of Andraste as though... as though she were still alive. Is that possible? I'm old enough to know that anything is possible, child. Or was there something else you wanted to discuss? It, what were the villagers doing with you? They seemed intent on finding out personal information about me, where I grew up, things like that. They were planning to place a fake genitivi in Denerum. How do you know? There was an imposter Waylon at your house. An imposter? What happened to the real Waylon? I'm sorry, but he's dead. Oh, poor Waylon. I should never have dragged you into this. Make us take you into his hands, my boy. I'm sorry, brother. He believed in me. Even when I lost faith in myself. I will honor his memory. Was there... Was there uh, something else you wanted to say? I am ready to leave for the temple. Ah, good. Help me up here. Uh, uh, I'll try not to slow us down. Okay, he wanted to go. Here we are. Give me the medallion, and let's see if I remember. Yes, yes, you see, it, it can be manipulated, just like this. And there. A key to open the way. How'd you know how to do that? There are very few keys like this left in the world, but I have seen some. When you find the right combination, it just feels right. It is hard to explain. Now, let's see if we can open this door. There should be a place to insert this. He is so pleased with himself. Oh, what I would give to have seen this hall in all its splendor, as it was meant to be. Still, sweep away the ice and the snow, and traces of beauty remain. You need to stay alert now, brother. I'm sorry, what? Uh, I was a little distracted, I apologize. These carvings were created just after Andraste's death, and they may reveal things about her life that we do not yet know. I think I need more time to study these statues and carvings. You want to stay here? Is that safe? I could not keep up with you with my injuries. I should be safe. I don't think there are any villagers here. Go, and I will be alright. Perhaps my destiny was only to lead you to the Ann. Is there anything else I need to know about the temple? It was designed to protect the Ann from those who would steal it or do harm to it. Namely, the Taventer Imperium. What sort of dangers are we talking about here? I'm not sure. The legends were never very specific on that point. Only the faithful shall lay eyes on the sacred ashes. Death and misfortune await the unbeliever. The Maker's gaze has fallen on Andraste's final resting place. He weeps for his beloved, and his wrath at her betrayers endures. Maker. The Maker is here. That is what the legend says. 
And the Maker may indeed watch this place. Read between the lines, however, and you'll understand that it is merely a simple truth draped in hyperbole and metaphor. After all, no one wants to hear Willie toiled for many a year to perfect the curious mechanisms that would send a sharpened spike up the arse of the unwary intruder. <laughs> uh, cutting. I think my decision to stay here was the best one, don't you? Alright, try not to get into trouble. I'll be right here if you need me. Hmm, now I need something to write on. Now to find the urn of secret I ashes. I can't believe all this is still standing. This temple must be thousands of years old. Well, oh, this isn't good. There are cultists here. I hope Jenna TV is okay. Jenna TV, are you okay? Seems none the wiser. You're back. Have you reached the urn? Uh, not yet. There are people in there making things a bit difficult. I am glad to see you are safe. Are there many of them? Well, not really anymore. <laughs> you think you're going to be all right, though? I think so. I haven't seen sign of anyone. You must be keeping them busy. If I hear anything strange, I'll be sure to hide. All right, then. How's it going? That's Archon Hesarian, the magister who ordered Andraste burn to death and then took mercy on her at the last second. Ah. I'm surprised you knew that, Alistair. Have we been turned around? How does anyone navigate these halls? It's alright, I know exactly where I'm going, probably. Oh, that was a... That was an autosave. Go the other way. <laughs> alright, I've gone through the whole rest of the area, killed a few drakes and dragonlings, and... Yeah, I killed many, many cultists. So this dude has an exclamation point above his head. Let's see what he's got to say. Probably more cultists to murder. Stop! You will go no further! Oh, is that so? You have defiled our temple. You have spilled the blood of the faithful and slaughtered our young. No more. You will tell me now, intruder, why you have done all this. Why have you come here? Tell me your name. I will tell you why I am here. I am Father Colgrim, leader and guide to the disciples of Andraste. Kill us, and you will face Andraste. She will smell our blood, and the blood of her children on you, and her wrath will be great. Uh, children, you mean the dragons. Is Andraste a dragon? She is so much more! She is even more glorious than all the old gods combined. The prophet Andraste has overcome death itself and has returned to her faithful in a form more radiant than you can imagine. Not even the Tevinter Imperium could hope to slay her now. What hope do you have? Sounds like a challenge. What has happened to the ashes? They are still within this temple. But why do we need ashes when we serve the risen Andraste in all her glory? You treat the ashes with such disdain. What are they but the remains of a mortal woman? Are they not magical? They have nothing compared to the power we draw from the living Andraste. I wish to see this arisen Andraste. None but the disciples may approach Andraste. She is not ready yet. When the time is right, she will descend upon the nations in fiery splendor, and all will know her. But perhaps there is a way to make up for your recent transgressions. Why do you suddenly want to cooperate with me? It may be because I believe in second chances. All of us stumble through the darkness before being found and shown the light. Perhaps through Andraste's mercy. Her greatest enemy will become her greatest champion. Just say what you have to say. Atop this mountain lie the remains of the mortal Andraste. The urn is watched by an immortal guardian. He is trapped in the past and refuses to accept the risen Andraste. Now the ashes prevent holy Andraste from fully realizing her new form. They are a remnant of her past incarnation and she cannot move on. As long as they exist. 
You would destroy the ashes? I would see you dead first. To arms, my brethren! And Draste will grant us victory! Good luck. <laughs> well, how did that work out for you? Not so well, considering you're a smear on the ground. I think we found Andraste. Oh, I'm not afraid. It wouldn't want to eat me anyway. Tough and stringy. You, on the other hand, ought to be worried. I think it's time we fight a dragon. Victory. Yeah, that is very much not recommended unless you're on easy enough. Oh, look at all this loot. I bid you welcome, Pilgrim. You must be the guardian. Yes, I am the guardian of the ashes. I have waited years for this. Why have you been here for so long? It has been my duty. My life to protect the urn and prepare the way for the faithful who come to revere Andraste. For years beyond counting have I been here, and shall I remain until my task is done and the Imperium has crumbled into the sea. Will your task ever be done? I do not know, and I do not question. Who are the men who have taken over the temple? When my brethren and I carried Andraste from Tevinta to this sanctuary, we vowed to forever revere her memory and guard her. I have watched generations of my brethren take up the mantle of their fathers. For centuries they did this, unwavering, joyful in their appointed task. But now they have lost their way. They have forgotten Andraste. And their promise. The dragon was not Andraste. No. Our Andraste has gone to the Maker's side. She will not return. The dragon is a fearsome creature. And they must have seen her as an alternative to the absent Maker. And his silent Andraste. A true believer would not require audacious displays of power. How did the belief spread to the rest of the disciples? It began with an ancestor of the one known as Colgrim. He saw himself as a new prophet, preaching the rebirth. Some disagreed with him. I heard their cries of pain and loss, 
which were quickly silenced. Let's not waste time. How do I get to the urn? You have come to honor Andraste, and you shall, if you prove yourself worthy. Do I have to fight you? It is not my place to decide your worthiness. The gauntlet does that. If you are found worthy, you will see the urn and be allowed to take a small pinch of the ashes for yourself. If not... What is the gauntlet? The gauntlet tells the true pilgrims from the false. You will undergo four tests of faith, and we shall see how your soul fares. Can you tell me anything else about this gauntlet? You will understand what it is when you face it. Very well. I will enter. Before you go, there is something I must ask. I see that the path that led you here was not easy. There is suffering in your past. Your suffering, and the suffering of others. You abandoned your father and mother, leaving them in the hands of Rendon Howe, knowing he would show no mercy. Do you think you failed your parents? No, I had to survive to tell Fergus that we were betrayed. Then you do not dwell on past mistakes. Neither yours, nor someone else's. It's easy for others to judge what you've done in hindsight, but it doesn't make it any better. It is sometimes difficult to see how our actions affect an outcome, but that does not mean our actions had no effect. What's past is past. Why bring it up and open old wounds? And what of those that follow you? Alistair, Knight, and Warden. You wonder if things would have been different if you were with Duncan on the battlefield. You could have shielded him from the killing blow. You wonder, don't you, if you should have died and not him. I... Yes. If Duncan had been saved, and not me, everything would be better. If I just had the chance, maybe I... Ask your question, Guardian. I am ready. You are ever the advisor, ready with a word of wisdom. Do you wonder if you spout only platitudes, burned into your mind in the distant past? Perhaps you are only a tool used to spread the word of the Circle and the Chantry. Does doubt ever chip away at your truths? You frame the statement in the form of a question, yet you already know our answers. There is no sense in hiding, is there? Yes, I do doubt at times. Only the fool is completely certain of himself. And you? Why do you say the Maker speaks to you? When all know that the Maker has left, he spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orle, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself, become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. The way is open. Good luck, and may you find what you seek. That was intense. So yeah, learn a little bit more about Liliana, and while he most likely did have the dream, he was, uh, he was a little full of herself after having it. Gotta let herself sink into that fantasy of being the one who is going to help stop the blight. But I remember this. Echoes from a shadow realm, whispers of things yet to come. Thought's strange sister dwells in night, is swept away by dawning light. 
Of what do I speak? Dreams. A dream came upon me as my daughter slumbered beneath my heart. It told of her life, and of her betrayal and death. I am sorrow and regret. I am a mother weeping bitter tears for a daughter she could not save. The smallest lark could carry it, while a strong man might not. Of what do I speak? A tune. Yes, I was Andraste's dearest friend in childhood, and always we would sing. She celebrated the beauty of life, and all who heard her would be filled with joy. They say the maker himself was moved by Andraste's song, and then she sang no more of simple things. I'd neither a guest nor a trespasser be. In this place I belong, that belongs also to me. Of what do I speak? Home. It was my dream for the people to have a home of their own, where we would have no masters but ourselves. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and thus we followed Andraste against the Imperium. But she was betrayed, and so were we. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. The debt of blood must be paid in full. Of what do I speak? My favorite thing, vengeance. Yes, my husband Hesarian would have chosen a quick death for Andraste. I made him swear that she would die publicly with her war leaders, that all would know the Imperium's strength. I am justice. I am vengeance. Blood can only be repaid in blood. A poison of the soul, passion's cruel counterpart. From love she grows, till love lies slain. Of what do I speak? Jealousy. Yes, jealousy drove me to betrayal. I was the greatest general of the Alamari, but beside her I was nothing. Hundreds fell before her on bended knee. They loved her, as did the Maker. I loved her too, but what man can compare with a god? The bones of the world stretch towards the sky's embrace, veiled in white, like a bride greeting her groom. Of what do I speak? Mountains. Yes. I carried Andraste's ashes out of Tevinta into the mountains to the east, where she could gaze ever into her maker's sky. No more fitting a tomb than this could we find. She wields the broken sword, and separates true kings from tyrants. Of what do I speak? Mercy. Yes, I could not bear the sight of Andraste's suffering, and Mercy bade me end her life. I am the penitent sinner, who shows compassion as he hopes compassion will be shown to him. No man has seen it, but all men know it. Lighter than air, sharper than any sword. Comes from nothing, but will fell the strongest armies. Of what do I speak? Yes. Hunger. Yes. Hunger was the weapon used against the wicked men of the Teventer Imperium. The Maker kindled the sun's flame, scorching the land. Their crops failed, and their armies could not march. 
Then he opened the heavens and bade the waters flow, and washed away their filth. I am Kefer, disciple of Andraste and commander of her armies. I saw these things done, and knew the Makers smiled on us. I believe if you mess up any of those, you just end up having to do a fight. My dearest child. I wish it were not so, but I know you are dead. You know that I am gone, and all your prayers and wishes will not bring me back. Pop, I know you miss me, but my death and my life no longer have a hold on you. This is how it should be. Set your eyes on the horizon. Do not look back, and do not falter. You have such a long road ahead of you, and you must be prepared. And so I leave this in your hands. I know you will do great things with it. And for that, you get reflection. A simple amulet with a mirrored back and an archaic symbol of the Chantry on the front. Sometimes, when gazing into the silvered backing, there are fleeting glimpses of someone else. The face is familiar, and the smile encouraging. Game auto saves always a good sign. It's us! As you wish. You fall to a hand. Here comes trouble! Correct. Let's have at it! Is that all you've got? On it. Oh, there's fake Liliana. Get her. Be careful of yourself! Push them back! Oh. 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 Kill Shoot fake Alistair. Take that. Well, that was an easy fight. Hey, you see those thingies over on the side of that huge chasm? I bet they're used for something. Maybe I should touch them or stand on them? Alistair, normal people tend to avoid strange-looking sections of floor thingies, as you say. They tend to be traps. You uh, don't really think they're traps, do you? <laughs> Everyone has to stand on a specific thing. Right. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> I don't think it's solid enough to stand on, but it's a start. That's basically how this puzzle works. You need to have each person stand on one of these. Make a threat. Andraste only favored the clever, it seems. But we did it. We're through. This altar is little more than a dusty stone slab. You can make out an inscription carved into its face. Cast off the trappings of worldly life and cloak yourself in the goodness of spirit. King and slave, lord and beggar, be born anew in the maker's sight. Remove equipment. Everyone is naked. Walk through the fire. You have been through the trials of the gauntlet. You have walked the path of Andraste, and like her, you have been cleansed. You have proven yourself worthy, Pilgrim. Approach the sacred ashes. Yay, I got McClure's back. Thank you. This dude didn't make it, though. I never dreamed I would ever lay my eyes on the urn of sacred ashes. I... I, I, I have no words to express. 
I didn't think anyone could succeed in finding Andraste's final resting place. But here, here she is. I could not have asked for a greater honor than to be here. I will never forget this feeling. These are the earthly remains of Andraste, prophet and bride of the Maker. Take a pinch of the ashes. Take a pinch of the ashes and place it in a leather pouch. Alright, so at that moment, if you took the deal with the um, dragon cultist and you actually tried to defile the ashes by adding like a dragon's blood or something to it, uh, Liliana and Wynne, if you have them with you, will try to kill you and you will have to kill them because they will not um, stand for that. We got the urns. Unfortunate adventurer. RIP this dude. As you wish. Jenna TV, you're not gonna believe the hot mess I was just went through. Welcome back. You were gone for quite some time. Well, did you find it? Show him the pouch of ashes. You mean this? Is that? Oh, there's some dust on. No, that's not dust. Oh, Maker, I am not worthy to look upon. What? What was it like, coming to the urn, I mean? Ruling, there were tests. Tests? Interesting. Very interesting. Perhaps my research will not seem so much like blasphemy to the Chantry now. We must organize an expedition. There is so much history here, it must be studied. And, and pilgrims should be allowed to come to the urn. Uh, that is... that is not wise. As many will try to exploit this discovery. You might want to try and keep it on down low for a bit, my dude. But the urn belongs to all the faithful. How can you deny this to them? No, we must share it. I agree. We cannot withhold this from others. It is not our place. You have noble intentions, Brother Genitivi. But can you say the same of your brethren in the Chantry? So everyone comes by and takes some ashes from the urn. Oh, I hope that urn is self-replenishing. I will spread this good news or die trying. Uh, if something bad comes to this, it's gonna be your fault. I put in uh, the effort I felt I needed to. I must return home. I have much to do. If you ever find yourself in Denerim, please visit me. I am not a rich man, but I have a small collection of interesting artifacts, and I do owe you a reward for coming to my rescue. I hope to see you soon, my friend. So I believe you can, like, just, if you he isn't here, you can just be like, yeah, just, Urn's gone. It's gone. Time to give an item that we found to Zev real quick. He thought I'd do us about his homelands and how he missed the smell of leather. So we got here some Antivan leather boots for him. And some pair of boots made of luxurious Antivan uh, doe skin. There you go. Mmm, that smell. This is Antiven leather, isn't it? I would know that anywhere. <laughs> I don't know how you found it, but thank you. What are you waiting for? Try them on. But I'm not finished admiring them yet. Can you smell that? <sighs> like a rotting flesh. Just like back in Antiva City. Now if only you could find me a prostitute or two. A bowl of fish chowder and a corrupt politician. I'd really feel like I was home. <laughs> <laughs> and Death. the feet as well. Marvelous. What say you? Hey, since we're buddies. Since we're homies. Could, could you teach? Could you teach other people how to be an assassin? You know, like me. Hmm. I suppose the crows are already furious, yes? What harm is another tweak to their nose? If you wish to be trained in the basics of an assassin, I can certainly show you. Or anyone else who is also a rogue. It shall be fun. I will make it fun. I promise. Yeah. Now we've learned how to uh, be an assassin from Zev. Also, we may have um, accidentally triggered uh, his romance by being nice to him. So, <laughs> we're gonna have to fix that later. Be gone! I got the, the magical item. You return. 
Might you have news? I found the urn. You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. Where am I? Be calm, brother. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isold? I am here, my husband. And Connor? Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... it was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it. This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I need help against the Blight. That will do. I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts. Nothing more. If you wanna. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you Champions of Redcliffe, you will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. Thank you, Your Grace. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man. One who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. But you can unite the nobility against Loghain, can't you? I could unite those opposing Loghain, yes. But not all oppose him. He has some very powerful allies. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. Once everyone's learned what he's done... I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause. But we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative, but the unthinkable has occurred. You intend to put Alistair forward as king? Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet, a gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. My blessing? Why do you need my blessing? None of this would be possible without you. You led Alistair here. You saved my life with the urn of sacred ashes. It's your lead I follow. I am a credible enough figure in this nation to call the lands meet, but I hold no illusions that I could face Loghain without you. Surely you see that. Do you think this lands meet idea will work? That depends. If we cannot get a consensus in the landsmeet for Alistair, 
We cannot afford to oppose Loghain either. Does that mean Loghain could win? A man who killed his own king? Who has gone mad with power? Perhaps. We must see that he does not. And the Darkspawn? Ferelden must stand united to defeat the Darkspawn. A fractured nation will not defeat the Blight, even given my army and those gathered with your treaties. Alright, seems we have little choice. Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord. Other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I have done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? He confronted the demon in the Fade and saved Connor's life. Thus spared my wife from offering herself as sacrifice as well, I understand. But has he done all this just to save his own skin? And what would you have me do? As the injured party, my ability to see the merciful path is strained. Let him go. Let the Circle hunt him if they wish. That I cannot do. He is a Maleficar, and I cannot unleash him on a land already racked by war and chaos. I am sorry. Jowan, I hereby turn you over to the Tower of the Circle of Magi. May the Maker have mercy on your soul. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the Landsmeet. It will take some time to recall my forces and organize our allies. I would prefer to wait until that is done before calling the Landsmeet. In the meantime, I suggest you pursue the remainder of the Grey Warden treaties. We will need all the allies we can get if we are to defeat the Darkspawn Horde. You have restored Eamon. I am most grateful. It's up to him what happens next. If anyone can force an end to the Civil War, he can. My husband lives thanks to you. I am grateful. We are still not yet ready to call the Landsmeet, Grey Warden. Pursue your treaties and return with new allies, if you are at all able to. Nice, we did it! We did it! Alright, all done, so let's end all of this. With a nice roundabout of a few of our homies. Oh. Uh, I would expected golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I shall kill for the master and only for the master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. See, that's what I'm talking about. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? You just seem very animated. Being different isn't so bad. Did I say it was bad? Huh. It thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. I agree. Being a golem would be pretty handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater. Crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Anything today, Roland? I'm very pleased with your leadership. It's an honor for me to follow you. Thank you. I also enjoy your company. Well, that's very nice of you. Huh. But I'm referring to the Arles family. I'm glad the situation didn't get out of hand. Do you miss anything about Orle? I miss Valroyo. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyo was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyo, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. 
It was magnificent. Sounds wonderful. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlais. What of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orlais is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. Oh, I love shoes. You gotta, you gotta be having the nicest fit for your feet. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. Yo, I got some vans. They high tops. Very floral. Pretty stylish. I had my eye on a pair my shoemaker was working on. It was covered in pale blue silk with amber beads on the toe. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Ugh, just look at them. I know, right? They're so very ugly and shapeless. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? What up, when? What's on your mind? I was just thinking about being a Grey Warden. Hmm. Is something troubling you? Sometimes I wish I could go back to my old life. A Grey Warden should put aside the person that he used to be. It has shaped the person that he is, but he has become something greater. Grey Wardens have no titles. They owe no allegiance to a king or lord. They cannot serve one people. They must serve them all and protect them all. You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. I don't give up easily. And that gives me hope. Zeron! What say you? Answer questions? By all means. Tell me about your adventures. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? You certainly talk like you've had adventures. Falling down a flight of stairs is an adventure. <laughs> Falling into someone's bed, also an adventure. I am assuming what you're looking for are professional anecdotes. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. And your second mission? Well, it was just the one mage. Not as simple a mission as the vagrant Grey Warden or two, perhaps. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. And she didn't try to kill you? Well, yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiba City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. You didn't actually kill her. Not actually, no. I was a bit unimpressed by the development at first. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. These sorts of things happen to you often. Like being spared by a benevolent mark who then helps me escape from the crows? Yes, it does seem to happen now and again, doesn't it? It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. 
<laughs> a wise lesson to learn. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tale spinning from me for the moment. Uh, talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. Freaking Zevran. Ah, uh, he's a trash assassin. <laughs> he's so bad at his job. Yes? He'd speak of things. Of course. Ah, uh, oh yeah, Templars. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Can other people learn these talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Well, that's kind of awful. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective, or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. This silver emblem of Andraste's flame is riddled with cracks. Someone with a lot of patience has carefully glued it back together. Oh, this. This is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I think he, I found it on the road somewhere. It's so rude. Found it in Redcliffe Castle. In the study. Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Perhaps you mean more to him than you think. I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much. And then the way I left. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this. The next time I see him, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. Huh. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Sorry, did you say something? Ho, ho, ho. See this gesture I'm making? Can you hear that? 